we have a great show today. We're bringing on two guests, which is something new for us, and two guests that I've wanted to get on the show individually, but we decided to group everybody together and have three voices. The conversation we're going to have is still around the same authentic self, empathy, mindfulness. And I think it'll be really nice to share that with multiple people on a call instead of just one-on-one. -on -one. So what I thought we'd do is we'd start with Imbal. And I think that the same question is going to hold true. Past year, it's been tough. There's, there's loneliness, there's remote work. H how were you able to get out of bed every day? You know, think back in March, April, May, when there was the uncertainty and, and a lot of chaos. And then I'm going to ask the same thing to you, Veli. So again, so the question is, how were you able to get out of bed? What lessons can you share with us? Well, um, that's a good question. I actually think that, um, first of all, personally, I'm a very optimistic person. And uh, I do like see the, the light in every situation. Yep. <laughs> and uh, that's also my leadership style. Like I'm always highlighting the positive. Personally, for me, I've been doing what I always do and just uh, setting it uh, remotely. And the hard part was really to be able to understand that this remote working is, is not something that is going to end very yeah. soon. And it took me quite a while to understand that this is a new situation and I have to adapt. It's not something that I can, you know, just say, okay, in a month, I'm just doing something temporary. And uh, then I realized that it's going to stay for a while. <laughs> and I think you're, you're based in Israel, correct? Correct. Right. And what I, what I think what's interesting about the pandemic is it doesn't matter your age, your sex, your race, your location. It's this moment that we all been through. I can relate to you. I've been through that. So, Veli, same question to you. How the yeah, heck did uh, you get out of bed? <laughs> it's really a great question. Um, yeah, and let me, let me first share what, what my perspective is and where I'm coming from. Uh, so I'm with a more, let's say, junior entrepreneur background. I haven't, I haven't had leadership experience for that much, that long. Let's say I've been in a leadership position for the past couple of years before the pandemic struck. So my honest answer would be, how, how did I get out of bed? Well, honestly, in the beginning of the pandemic, it was, it was hard. Like there were moments where it was very tough getting out of bed. We've had a lot of ups and downs, mainly because we're a tra travel startup. So as you know, travel was especially yeah. badly hit. And uh, well, the first thing is like, you have to basically realize that this is happening to everyone. Uh, and it's normal. We don't have to be uh, hard on yourself. Um, when you're struggling with your own personal motivation, you don't have to be tough on yourself all the time. And you don't have to you have to have this empathy to your team uh, exactly because we're moving to like a new setting. It's expected that productivity might be falling and it's going to be very tough to maintain same levels of motivation. And at first, my approach was like trying to be like the tough leader, show that I'm very emotionally I have emotional endurance. I can like present uh, a positive image, like uh, uh, show my team that basically we're gonna get through this and that I'm not struggling and that I'm motivated. And at some point I like almost crumbled and uh, yeah. found out that um, this is not gonna be sustainable. Like uh, I can't continue uh, maintaining this facade. So I found it very liberating uh, that during these times, uh, it's been great being honest with your team, being more transparent, letting them know that you as well are struggling. And this sort of, I found that uh, it bonded the team quite well, to my surprise, like being vulnerable in front of uh, everyone. Yeah. Just, I'm, I'm glad you said that. I feel the same way. Uh, yeah. We are the adults and we're struggling you know, for being human and honest, but we have to be able to upskill our direct reports and their direct reports and um, yeah, I think it's it's been an interesting time, and I've seen that, and I with my experience and other guests, where they've shared more with their teams than they probably ever had before, on good and bad days, on things just to make it a more human connection. For me, I talk about it. It's 
you know, we started this show. I've never done podcasts. I mean, we started this show because of a lot of the loneliness. To me, it's just great to meet new people, you know, sitting at home. And so this to me, I sometimes I think I need this more than my guests, right? Because it's so nice. I think as, as we go through, now we kind of walk through what has happened, right? So we have that first part of, hey, this is March, this is April. Oh, by June of last year, we'll be back at work. Or, you know, now it's October. Now we can work from it. So now I find myself in another spot of anxiety because everyone was saying the news and people, when I say everyone, hey, June 2000, I don't even know what year is, 22, you'll be back at work. Now people don't want to go back to work. So, you know, just pick that up. You know, I think um, in ball, is my pronouncing that right in ball? Yeah. Well, I just picked that up where you want to pick it up, right? Because we started at the beginning of this uncertainty. Now I think there's more anxiety because we still don't know, do we go back? Do we don't not go back? Can I move around? So just yeah. share with us like how you're thinking about as a person and as an executive. Yes, I think that um, in Israel, people are very flexible relatively because we have so many things going on all the time. And uh, one of the the cultures here is uh, the startup culture and and why is it thriving so well it's because we can adapt and uh, I think that uh, startups are uh, like like Israeli uh, people are used to to pivot all the time and to to explore new options so I think that this is uh, something about the culture that um, makes us uh, a little bit uh, more used to change and uh, acceptive of new things. Definitely, I think that the, the moment that it hit me that I need to adapt, uh, so I started taking longer breaks during le- like lunch. Yeah. And uh, and I, I just put it in my calendar and the team sees me and this serves as an example. Like I, I told everyone, take the time you need if yeah. you have kids, if you if you need the time. So just, you know, block it, block it in your calendar. And that, that's it. That's that's fine. I think that it was very surprising that the productivity during this time, it, it was so much better uh, and better than expected and also better than, than it used to be. Even though we took longer breaks and uh, essentially worked fewer hours, you are more productive because you don't have the breaks and you don't have the, the, the interpersonal relationships. No, I, there's, a, there's a lot there that I'm going to chime in, but before I chime in, Veli, pick that up. I mean, same. Are you living a healthier life? Are you getting more reflective time to then have more time critical thinking to then do a better output? I mean, there's a lot there, but pick that up anywhere you want. Yeah. Um, let's start from there that culturally we've been a company even before the pandemic where we've uh, put a lot of value on uh, flexibility and basically being able to work whenever you want, from wherever you want. Uh, you can take, for example, a day off if you need to uh, and then work on the weekends if you feel like... Uh, doing it as long as you get your job done. Right. So uh, for us, uh, you know, this has always been an option and this was probably why we, we were <laughs> at least a little bit prepared, let's say, uh, for, for the apocalypse. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, and uh, well, it's an interesting topic regarding uncertainty and productivity and how do we stay productive uh, during these uncertain times. Again, because for us, literally when the first lockdown happened, uh, we noticed pretty much overnight how our business went from like um, the revenue we had before to almost zero uh, in a matter of uh, weeks. And um, it's been a very, um, well, let's say life changing or the the way we were structuring our team or planning, uh, this has been the most pivotal moment uh, of this whole thing. And um, we spent maybe the, the past year of lockdown trying to figure out uh, how do we move in this uh, period of great uncertainty? What do we do? Yeah. Like, uh, if we keep business as usual, it's obvious that our revenue is not going to grow. Uh, everything travel is completely dead right now. So we had to adjust and, and um, prepare for a time where uncertainty is basically the norm. And you can't really have a quarter quarterly planning with quarterly objectives. Uh, right. That is just not going to not gonna hold. And I think 
that's why I would say we're more prepared right now for this new period of great uncertainty where the lockdown seemed to be almost over. Uh, but what comes next? And nobody knows. It's um, it's unnerving. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's an it's unnerving. I think for yeah. me, there's a few things that I just want to chime in on about productivity. For me, what I've seen about myself and people I've asked this question to, I've now because I've had time in isolation to think and be mindful and reflect. I now rethink my calendar. So I have since I'm not commuting back and forth. I now have the awareness of when my critical thinking time is and when my critical output time is and i guard them both differently so my critical output time i get up early and i really now just first thing i do you know I, i'll journal and then i'll just get to my critical tasks and i've been able to have to train my brain when i open up an email i'm only opening up my email to draft i'm not looking at certain emails because i know in the first thing in the morning that will distract me then I have really set up a good flow for me on just reflective time where I can take a walk, do something active. And then sometimes just by doing that, I unblock something that we've been trying to do. So I think how I've seen us being more productive is, right, I think because there's a little bit more space or air or something. I think humans now are getting to a, maybe a creative place to unblock certain code strings, proposals. So when I get back, I, I hit the keys and the keys just kind of move themselves. Have you both experienced stuff like that where you just, since you're home, you can think and then crank at a different pace? What are your thoughts? And pick that up, whoever wants to pick that up, Valley or, or Inbal. Sure. Yeah. Well, actually, those are like some very valid points. So I would have to be completely transparent and honest with you. I'm learning more than I'm sharing my experience right now because uh, managing my time in such a way and compartmentalizing and staying off of work has been like a huge struggle for me. Right. Uh, I've mostly been trying to figure out how to stay motivated at work, how to keep our team motivated, how can we push those goals and uh, basic experiment. But yes, one of the benefits really, uh, and it's sort of a two-edged sword because it's uh, beneficial in the beginning, I found, yeah. to have this sort of uh, structure in your time and uh, sit at home alone and have basically a walk in the park, recharge whenever you feel like, and then you feel obviously much more productive. Uh, but then at some point there were some diminishing returns in that, uh, because sooner or later, even if you try to manage your time perfectly, at some point I was like the most organized in my life I've ever been, uh, with like a very rigorous, rigorous schedule. And, um, yeah, I, I'm still thinking. learning, right. I'm, I'm with you. I'm still learning. Yeah. Um, but you know, I always thought as maybe as a little kid, boy, if I was struck stuck on a desert island who would i want to be stuck with and after going through this pandemic i think it's just me because <laughs> i think i feel annoyed with anybody so in ball have you had any insights on your because you brought the good point productivity right but mm -hmm. have you seen your calendar your use of your time change are you more guarded are you thinking about it differently i don't know i just want to see if i am dorky if i like i don't want to feel like i'm the, am i normal is this normal like i want to learn from you and, and yeah, not at all. um i think that also it uh, it had uh, phases like uh at the beginning i felt that it, and uh, it was both true for me and for my team members that uh there are no boundaries between work time and uh uh the the lifetime the work life, life balance it was com it completely changed and I started um, getting emails from some of my team members uh, very late at night and I, I was thinking, okay, this is not healthy, but you're reading it. <laughs> um, and uh, it's because we we didn't have a sense of when the, the workday starts and ends. So it's just one big work day over and over again and uh, then at some point I talked about it uh, with my team members and um, and also with my husband and my family and we like decided on some guidelines of how how to do that it's a must <laughs> I agree I want to share one thing that I did and I want to hear the guidelines that you did but there were certain meetings that were put on my calendar and I would push back 
keep meetings during business hours. Like I'm not doing a seven, not, not I'm not, but I would phrase it as I now have learned I'm not productive at seven or eight o'clock at night. These were local teams, but we were busy. So we wanted to meet after hours. So I, I understand time zones. I want to put an asterisk there because you're, you're right. I felt like we're kind of pushing the envelope of, hey, we're working from home. Let's just have these these times. And I, I too was like, no, I think that's just unhealthy. You know, and I'm not that productive, but what was the guides that you put in, in your life with your husband? I'm just, if you can share any, I'd love to learn. Yeah. So first of all, as mentioned before, I took uh, longer lunch breaks uh, and we actually, it was nice. We had lunch together every day uh, and we cooked together and uh, it was, it was nice. And then uh, um, we decided that every few days we'll, we'll block the afternoon and do some family work. And also every other day we, we blocked uh, a small uh, time slot in the morning to uh, help the, the kids. And we, I have two daughters, uh, so help them with the school because we had... Uh, remote schooling and sometimes they needed uh, us yep. there. Uh, yeah. So we had it all organized in a, in a calendar and it, it was uh, very effective, I must say. And then you, I want to pick up a thread that you said, but I want to go in a different direction for Veli. I don't have, I don't have children, but something that Inval said, I've heard a lot is the, also the joy of being around the, the, if you have younger children, when you would have to miss those moments. So Veli, I don't know if you have any kids, but have you seen that also where you've been able to be home and be with family and get some time that you might not have, have had? Um, no, well, that's an, that's an interesting, maybe perhaps my perspective is very different in that regard. Um, well, because first of all, I don't have uh, any children, but I also live on my own. So uh, yeah, uh, my observations regarding personal life, uh, and I can get to also how our team was functioning and what guidelines we set in that respect. But personally, sure. that's what I wanted to say even earlier that, um, yes, it obviously helps to maintain a very uh, structured calendar, wake up at the same time, maintain some yes. schedule, go for a walk, do sports. Uh, and I found that I've been more disciplined than ever uh, during the past year. Uh, because obviously that helps a lot, but um, also a very important point is that uh, again, after a while, uh, even if you're like living very healthy, uh, it just gets tiring. I mean, it gets it gets too much. And uh, yes, that, why I started the show. The one thing I found that's the most being the most useful and that I learned as a very valuable skill is just talk to people, like um, share how you're feeling and. Uh, I think that's especially valid for uh, like technical people uh, who are not used to sharing their emotions, how they're feeling. They're used to like be completely oblique to the world. And uh, it's nice to, to reach out and to uh, talk to people because what you find is that uh, a lot of people relate and say, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling the same way. And uh, I've been having those exact struggles. Uh, and on a personal note, yeah, that's been uh, my most valuable finding. Uh, and that's, I've tried to work this into my, uh, you know, day-to-day -day work. Uh, I try to be more, more mindful of how everyone on the team is feeling. And I've been very sensitive on um, making sure to ask people how they're feeling and talk to them more often, just to make sure that everything's all right. Just pulling this to another direction, there have been big winners, industries, and sadly big losers in industries because of the pandemic. And I don't think there's a middle you either crushed it or got crushed. So Veli, like my heart goes out to you because you're you're in that sector, like travel. It doesn't yeah. matter how hard you work, are we going to put the hours in or our usability or our UI? Or people were just not traveling. Like that sector was not a winner in this. And then there are sectors that absolutely just won big. And I mean, they have the grit to stay through it and keep the team together. I mean, it, that's just not not easy. But it's it's good to hear that you, you made it through. You know, this startup is tough. I always love meeting founders, and and I'm a former founder myself. And it's you know you got to love the problem because it's 
you're going to get this. And Bob, what about your sector? How did you fare out on, were you in the sector that was winning in the, the COVID or losing? Like where, what was your company doing? Yeah, so at the time I was uh, in the fintech industry, which uh, eventually has flourished, but um, there was a time of uh, uncertainty and, uh, you know, it, yep. it has hit everyone pretty fast. It was clear that we were on, on, on the good side. Yeah. Um, actually, I must say that I have um, friends working um, in data science team in uh, booking and uh, other like tourism and uh, and that industry. Yeah. And uh, they said that actually they are having a very good time because they have the opportunity to work on tech debt and, uh, <laughs> <Right. laughs> and get all the infrastructure and everything that they always wanted to do. And they were like so happy. And I was thinking, okay, that's that's re like really flipping it to the, <laughs> the good side. Well, you no, know it's interesting about that. I was on uh, I was on a panel yesterday uh, online, uh, Zoom, and it was about invest. It was an investor panel, and we were talking about because everybody's been home. People who are engineers, data scientists, have spun up their own companies at such a level that VCs are getting instead of like they were saying like five decks a day presentation deck, they're getting 50 what else are you doing you're home you're creating a company and like you're just sending it so um right either be the technical debt or like building something i think there's the people that use this time the people to, to upskill themselves and and get to a good place they also as people are are the winners and when i think when we look back and we know we didn't spend that much time upskilling during this time i think we'll look back and wish maybe we did more so to me, this is a, a highlight of my day, just connecting with two other humans who have in a little way gone through what I've gone through. And I've and in countries I've not been to, I've not been to Israel. And Valley, I think you are, you, I know you're in a different, which, where are you right now? Yes, um, actually I'm based in Bulgaria. Right. In, uh, yeah. I mean, just think about it. This is a, a, a global pandemic that people are, again, I can relate to. I might not be able to relate to a lot of other things, but like we all can relate to what it's like to be at home and the loneliness and how to get your work done. So this is to me why we do this show. So, cool. And first off, we all need to connect. Make sure we all connect you both because this is a, a cool little uh, show. So I want to thank you both for sharing the, your authentic selves. This was a, a, a nice show to hear how everyone is trying to keep on getting out of bed. That's the hardest thing sometimes. So I want to thank you both for being on the show. Thank you. No. Oh, thanks for uh, both having us. Of course. Uh, we are the Data Standard. We're sponsored by Pandio ML. Uh, they're doing some killer stuff with open source, and I'll, I'll connect you with them too. So if you want to test their stuff. So thank you so much. Thank you.